Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and this is my channel where we talk about all the houseplant things. So today we're going to be talking about all of the plant things that I don't buy anymore. And I was really inspired to do this because I recently cleaned out all of my plant supplies and there was quite a few things that I've noticed I have not been rebuying. And I wanted to sort of talk about that and talk about why. And also this video is sponsored by Case to Buy, so thank you to them for sponsoring a portion of this video. And let's get into it. Okay, the number one thing that I am no longer buying is individual soil components because I have the De La Tanks houseplant mix. So the De La Tanks houseplant mix is a houseplant mix that I created in partnership with Tanks Green Stuff, which is a local soil company in Tucson, Arizona. What we did to create the soil was take the soil mix that I was already making at home and then make it with tank screen stuff so we use better materials and also we nailed down the ratios so that the mix was always exactly the same every single time. So basically I'm really glad that I don't have to buy all of the individual soil components anymore. Number one for the convenience of it already being done for me in De La Tanks but number two because it was really annoying to have to store all of these things and I would run out of everything at different times and it also could be kind of expensive to buy all these different bags and then I was buying multiple bags of things so it makes more trash. It was just a whole thing and I'm really glad that I don't have to do that anymore. It just saves me a lot of time and a lot of effort. So if you're interested in checking out the soil mix, I have it linked down below. I have a discount code that is always active and you can try it out if you want. It's also available in lots of different retailers in Arizona and Missouri and a few other states. The next item that I no longer buy is sphagnum moss. So I used to use spag for propagating like wet sticks and things like that. And honestly, I can't say that I'll never buy spag again, but I will say that if I do, it'll be pretty surprising to me because I've learned other ways to propagate wet sticks and things like that. Um, mainly just using cocoa choir instead. Actually, I haven't tried doing a wet stick in cocoa choir, but I have been propagating plants in cocoa choir, very similarly to how people propagate plants in sphagnum moss, like in a pot. So basically what people do is fill the pot with spag as if it was soil, put the plant in it, and then top dress it with more sphagnum moss. And so I've been doing exactly that except with Coco peat and it's been so amazing to see how this number one much more sustainable material acts pretty much exactly the same as soil so when the roots do come in they're soil roots they're not water roots which helps the plant to transition out of the coco peat into soil so much better and i find with coco peat it doesn't stick to the roots as much as sphagnum moss does like every time i propagated a plant in sphagnum moss I felt really, really bad like peeling off the sphagnum moss from the roots. And I know that you don't always need to do that, but I was like hyper paranoid that the roots would get root rot or something from staying wet for too long with the moss. So I just tried to remove as much as possible. And this is, a, this is definitely something that I'm gonna have to deal with like for the rest of my plant parenthood because lots of people, lots of sellers still do use spag but at least on a personal level with all of my own propagating, I'm not gonna have to worry about it, which is a really big relief. And then not to mention that sphagnum moss is not a renewable resource. So there's always that, like what's the ethics behind using sphagnum moss? But I'm not here to shame anybody for using spag because it works really, really well and it can be reused a ton. Like you can just sanitize the sphagnum moss by boiling it in water and just keep using it over and over again, which I did a lot of the time. I only ever purchased one single block of sphagnum moss and I still have well not not anymore but up until like a couple months ago I was still using it so it definitely lasts a long time if you use it well and you're like mindful of that but yeah it's just not something that I'm buying anymore because I found a better more sustainable option for myself as I said earlier this video is sponsored by case to buy so I'm really excited to tell you a little bit about them Case Defy is basically a phone case company. They are my favorite phone case company. I honestly don't trust putting my phone in any other case because these ones are so, so good. This is an ultra impact case. So you can see it has some bumpers on it. And this case is drop test approved up to 9.8 feet. Also Case Defy's cases are 65% recycled and plant-based materials. So you know you're not only making a good decision for your phone, but also for the planet. Before I get too far into it, I want to show you 
the drop test. So I said 9.8 feet, so I'm probably just gonna like throw it up in the air and see what happens. But as you can see, my phone is in good condition here. So throw it up in the air. Oh my gosh. And it still looks great. <laughs> Something really awesome about Casetify is that their cases are non-toxic, non-hazardous, and they have an antimicrobial coating on them, which keeps your case germ-free, germ <laughs> killing 99% of bacteria. If you're interested in having a case like with the design on it, this is a personal favorite. This artist actually, I'll put their name on the screen so that you can search them up. You can find their specific designs. There's a lot of personalization options from font to color to design and it's all done really easily on their website. I feel like when I was living with a bunch of roommates, a phone case with my name on it would have been absolutely incredible because we all had iPhones and we were always picking up each other's phones on accident. So if you had a phone case with your name on it, literally nobody would be picking up your phone besides you. So anyway, if you're interested in upgrading your phone case, you can check out Casetify in the link down below or go to www.casetify.com slash plants for 15% off your new favorite phone case. The next planty thing that I'm no longer buying are moss pole components. So it is official, I have turned away from moss poles, which is like a really, it's like a monumental thing because one of my first videos on YouTube that ever really took off was making a moss pole with sheet moss. And I feel like um, I did have a lot of success with that first moss pole I ever made. Like definitely worked really, really well. But after that, I just experienced so many plants never interacting with the moss pole and just never seeing any of the fruits of this support system. And sphagnum moss, I use sphagnum moss in a lot of my moss poles, so that kind of coincides with this one, but I just don't really see the need to use a moss pole anymore if there's a better solution for helping plants climb. And honestly, the thing that I have seen plants climb on the most is wood, because obviously, you know, when these plants are in nature, they're growing on wood, so they're gonna, <laughs> do the same thing in our homes if we give them the opportunity. So this plant right here is actually what really inspired me to stop using moss poles because it's growing on just like a round stake, like a huge round wood pole. And it's just incredible to see plants doing this. And there's a lot of people out there who are doing plants on planks, myself included. I actually, Oh, they're not, they're not here anymore. I had some planks right here. <laughs> um, but I am getting that started um, over in my plant background area. I'm using a different background right now because this one is still under construction at the time that I'm filming this video. But anyway, point is, I have seen people have so much more success with rooting, with getting a plant to climb on wood rather than a moss pole. But then again, I've seen a lot of people have success with moss poles but those people who have success are people who are willing to like water their moss poles and sort of treat the pole as if it's another plant in itself. And with the amount of plants that I have and the amount of um, fricks that I give, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It just was not in the cards for me to do that. And I definitely tried to keep my moss poles wet. Like this one specifically, this is my Thai constellation. And a lot of these leaves are big because they interacted with the moss pole, but that was because I was watering the moss pole probably like every day or every other day. And when it was moist, the roots actually did grow into the moss pole and it was amazing. But other than that, I haven't really had a lot of success with moss poles. So I'm excited to like pivot and see if there's another medium that works without me having to constantly monitor it and like maintain it because yeah caring for plants is already a lot of work and i just i just don't have the energy to continuously water my moss poles in addition to the plants this next one actually kind of hurts to say but i used to be a huge advocate for buying clear orchid pots for your house plants but i'm here to say that i no longer stand by that advice these are the pots that i often suggested people buy and I want to still love these so badly. And I think it's just this specific pot that is really an issue because the holes on the sides just let out too much water because I noticed that every single time I watered my plants, 
water would just come out these side holes before it could completely filter down through the bottom of the pot. The reason that I started using these was because of they were clear and I liked knowing what was going on inside of the pots because if you have a plant that you're like anxious about or worried about, you can just do this and know that it's gonna be okay or you can like at least know quicker if it's not okay because you can pretty much see the roots super well. Unless I'm willing to like bottom water all the plants that are in these, I just don't use them anymore. And they're so nice because they're lightweight and they can be like hung up in my greenhouse cabinet. So I'm just really sad about this one. I mean, I still have so many of them because they come in like packs of 10 and I think that I bought probably 20 of them at one point because I was absolutely obsessed with them. But yeah, I just find that plants dry out really, really fast probably because they're not getting fully saturated because of all these holes. The water isn't even able to infiltrate the soil because as I've talked about before, houseplant soil and just soil in general is a lot like a sponge. So it needs time to absorb the water. And if it isn't, if the water isn't even sitting in the plant, it's not going to be able to absorb anything. With that said, I will not be rebuying these at any point. Sorry to anybody who I suggested doing it and you had bad experiences. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not the worst thing ever, but yeah, you probably have to bottom water if you're gonna use these, and I don't really like bottom watering that much. And the last plant item I'm no longer buying is non-lipped terracotta pots. And this one is kind of mm, in between because I am still gonna buy them, but I'm going to be mindful of the fact that the lip on the terracotta pot is really valuable to me in this moment because I'm doing an entire like hanging plant thing on this wall over here, which requires me to use plant clips, which also requires me to have terracotta pots with a lip on it because if I don't have the lip, then the clip is not going to attach very well. So that's a big thing. Um, I have a lot of terracotta, like most of my collection is in terracotta, which I absolutely love, but a lot of the terracotta I'm not gonna be able to use, so I'll probably have to like, I don't give it away or sell it, because a lot of my hanging plants are now being transported into terracotta with a lip. So I guess if I'm buying a pot for a hanging plant, I need to make sure that it has a lip, even if it's going to be like in a macrame thing for a while, like I don't have plans to put it on a hook, but still I feel like I'm still gonna buy a lipped terracotta pot just to make sure that that's possible, that I could hang it at some point if I wanted, because I have a lot of potential to hang a lot of plants on this wall, and I had to go out and buy pots that I didn't necessarily need so that I could have the terracotta lip on for the hook thing. So just one of those things with like plant styling that I'm thinking about moving forward because I was sort of haphazardly buying pots and not really thinking about where they were gonna go, how it was going to age with the plant. I was just kind of like, oh, I want this terracotta pot or like, oh, I need terracotta pots. So I'm just gonna buy them. And eventually they do get used, but the problem is storing them, right? So I think that in general, this point is just to say, I'm not going to be buying plant stuff just because like I want to have a purpose for it. I want to think through my purchases, especially with like plant tools and stuff because I have so much stuff that I never use, but I feel like I need to keep it because what if I use it eventually? So I'm like that with pretty much everything in my life, but I feel like it's even worse with like plant stuff and like craft stuff because it's annoying to have to go out and buy more stuff. From here on out, I'm just gonna be super mindful about what I'm bringing home from the garden center. And if I already have one, not buy another one because that's also another thing I do. I buy duplicates of things all the time and I don't know why. Like, I won't be able to find something, so I'm like, oh, I'll just go buy another one, and then I find the original, and now I have two. Now that I have a spot to keep all my stuff, hopefully I'm not gonna be losing things as often, so I won't have to deal with that as much, but it's just something that I'm thinking about, like, moving forward. And yeah, I guess I was only supposed to talk about the lips terracotta pot, but that kind of spiraled, and I feel like that was a better point than the lips terracotta pot to begin with. <laughs> So anyway, you guys, that's the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know down in the comments below what you are no longer buying for your plants. Um, maybe that's like a certain fertilizer or a certain soil or a certain gadget or whatever. What are you no longer buying? I'm interested to know because I feel like when we start our plant journey, we feel like we need to buy all of these things and then we slowly realize that mm, 
we don't actually need to buy most of this stuff. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to check out Case to Buy for your new favorite phone case. I love them, I know you will too, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.